गुड आफ्टरनून माय डियर पीपल्स ऑफ क्लास टेन आफ्टर ए प्रेटी लॉन्ग टाइम आई हैव मेट विथ यू अगेन बट इट इज नॉट ए फेस टू फेस मीटिंग एक्चुअली इट इज ए सॉर्ट ऑफ टीचिंग uh not um, we are not uh, so accomplished but we hmm? uh, accomplished but uh, it is online teaching because the situation demands so uh, i hope both uh, you are uh, you are well your parents are also well today i am going to teach you c fever by john misfield uh john misfield you know uh, john misfield is an english poet and he is also a poet laureate he was awarded the title of poet laureate uh he had he uh, he wrote many poems and sea fever was one of them now you know the name of the poem was given sea fever what is the meaning of sea fever actually sea fever it um, embodies a lot of meaning fever is a kind of uh, uh, it is a kind of our bodily discomfort but what is sea fever Sea fever actually means the poet wants to say the sailors' tremendous willingness to go to sea voyages. There was a time in the 15th century when the all the world was not known. It was the time of the Renaissance. The Renaissance was specifically remarkable for undertaking geographical exploration many european countries many sailors mean they sent so many explorers to different countries you know vasco da gama vasco da gama came to india not only was with vasco da gama the portuguese came and after vasco da gama english people came french people came so sea fever actually means it is an excitement of a passion of undertaking sea voyages it reveals the desire of men it is desire of men to know the grandeur of nature so sea fever actually the poet wants to say that sea fever means he is a tremendous passion to undertake sea voyages to discover new lands and at the same time to enjoy the beauties of nature and this sea fever once it comes upon a sailor it acts as a type of uh, intoxication during sea voyages so many sailors died but those who came back safely home they undertook again sea voyages and in this way you will know through series of sea voyages so many unknown continents have been discovered Africa was once known as a dark continent now what do you feel is africa a dark continent now is the entire is not the entire globe known to us today as for a see for example the pandemic that has spread all over the world some 400 or 500 years ago it was not not so publicized today you see this covid 19 pandemic has made the entire globe alert it is a fight 
against the disease. And it is possible because the entire world and all the countries have been discovered, communication has been established. And this communication has been established only due to those explorers, those voyagers who undertook several sea voyages. America was explored by Columbus, by Amerigo Vespucci. Now America is a powerful country today. So, this communication to, to see the unseen, to know the unknown, it is a, not only a passion, it is a strong feeling, it is a strong masculine feeling of human being. Howsoever the danger may be, it is man's passion, it is man's determination to win over the unknown, to win over the dangers. Now I am going to read the poem. You see how beautifully the poet has expressed the feelings, the emotions, the excitement of his voice of, a, of an explorer. Now, let me read the first stanza. I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and the sky. Now the very first line, I must go down to the seas again. There lies the determination of a sailor to undertake exploration, to, uh, to undertake voices, sea voices, irrespective of the danger. The danger is associated with the sea voice, but the sailor is not afraid of it. He is an explorer to the lonely sea and the sky. The sea is a lonely one when the sea is, is, is actually sailed along the sea everywhere only water, water and water. Coleridge said water, water, water everywhere but not a drop to drink, not a drop to drink. So it is a lonely sea and the sky. No human body, no civilization, no every, nothing is there, only water and water. But there lies the adventure, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. Now, the explorer, the voyager, once a sheep, it was a tall sheep. It was, it was not a sheep driven by petroleum. It is a sheep driven by sails. And the explorer wanted a star. That is the pole star. That means it was some 500 or 600 years ago when the Renaissance began in Europe. Then compass was not discovered. A sailor or the sailors, the captains, they had to depend upon the pole star. The pole, during daytime, the sun, uh, the sun was given them the proper direction. And during night, the sailors had to depend upon the pole star. So, the sailor needed a star. And the wheels kick and the wind song and the white sails shaking. I already told you the sh ships of those days were not driven by coal or petroleum or, uh, or driven by nuclear power. It was driven by the sails. The wind blew upon the sails and it was driven by and thus it sailed through the blowing uh, wind. 
and the wheels kick and the wind song the wheel kicked upon the water and the sailor he could hear a typical song of the water and the white sail was shaking a typical romantic fervor was actually described by the sailor and experienced by him and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking mist blurred the vision it is uh useful for a sailor to have a clear sky but sometimes the atmosphere is covered by mist and the gray mist dimmed our vision but it is a very natural thing and the sailors are and the sailors can tell us and the sailors were at that time accustomed to it and as expected the dawn was breaking that dawn was gray in color and it was actually it is actually symbolic of some imminent disaster because gray why did the poet use the particular color gray gray means lack of distinction gray means absence of transparency but in a typical sea voyage in a dangerous sea voyage very often the total uh, nautical ambience was uh, co- covered with mist it was nothing unusual nothing unexpected very very casual and very very common thing sometimes ships were laid astray and of very often at that time so many shipwrecks took place due to the dimness of vision so greenness gray color is symbolic of some imminent impending danger now the second stanza i must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide is a wild and a clear call that may not be denied again the assertion of the sailor to undertake the sea voyage howsoever dangerous howsoever perilous the journey may be it is a bold assertion we human beings are weak weak in body weak in physical stature but we human beings have something what other animals does not possess that is the strong determination that is a strong spirit to overcome all fears or dangers so even after coming back home even after facing a lot of uh, dangers even after facing a lot of perils our dear sailor is ready to undertake another sea voyage so he says the tide is a running tide it is a call of the run tide running tide the tide is actually calling him it is such an irresistible irresistible call that the sailor cannot ignore the sailor has to respond to the call it is a call the parents call their babies the teacher call their students it is also a call call of nature call of the running tide as if nature wants the association of the sailor 
नेचर वॉन्ट्स टू अनवेल हर सेल्फ टू द सेलर नेचर डज नॉट वॉन्ट द सेलर टू स्टे होम सेफली ओ प्लीज कम बैक अंडरटेक द जर्नी अनवेल माई सेल्फ आई वॉन्ट टू गेट माई सेल्फ अनवेल्ड is a wild call and this call is something wild wild means very very passionate very very masculine something very irresistible something very emotional something very impulsive and a clear call that may not be denied it is a this call from the running tide this call from the sea this call from the nature is a call that is undeniable it is it is only heard by the sailor the sailor who has taken several journeys and came back home safely but the nature does not allow him to sit at rest Oh my dear sailor again come back to me again come back to my lap i accept you as my companion it is you who will reveal my mysteries to the world so this is a call that is undeniable this is a call that cannot be rejected outright must respond to this call and all i ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying the sailor wants some elements that are necessary for a smooth and safe journey and one of them is a day full of winds because you know the ships were at that time driven by the driven by wind wind actually pushed the sails and it was possible for the ships to run in a smooth way and with the white clouds fly that paints a clear sky small pieces of clouds not dense cloud small pieces of clouds with sunrise and the days and the days may be must be windy very very favorable for sailing these are some uh criteria that the sailor needs and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying the spray that is the foams being pushed by being pushed by the oars being pushed by the oars of the seamen sprays are sprays are flung and the spume that is the waves and the foams they were blown to pieces so it is a very beautiful spectacle very beautiful spectacle the foam the spray all were blown to pieces and it was a kind of stirring and this stirring helped the sea to smooth to sail smoothly and the sea gulls crying and on the distant horizon the sea gulls they were crying as if the sea gulls also invited the sailor to undertake the voyage as if the sea gulls ask the sailor that you 
sail the ship, you navigate the ship, and I will show you the direction. As if the ship is being navigated by the sailor, by the seagulls. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life. Again the poet, again the sailor asserted to undertake the journey. No amount of pressure from home, no amount of pressure from friends and peers and relatives will resist him back home. This sailor's life is not to stay at home, to live among the family members, to enjoy a family life. No. He must undertake the sea voice because there is a good association between himself and the nature. Now he wanted to lead a life of a gypsy. A gypsy wanders from one place to another. Vagrant gypsy life. Vagrant means vagabond. Wandering life. So, the sailor wanted to accept the life of a wanderer, not the life of a family man, not the life of a peace, not the, not a life of a peaceful existence. He wanted a life of adventure. Adventure is the essence of his life. Therefore he wanted a life of a, a gypsy. A gypsy does not have a definite address. He lives here and the next day under, or after some days he settles to another, another place. Similarly, our dear sailor wanted to undertake voyages from once to Atlantic, then to Pacific, then to Mediterranean, several places. In Rabindranath's poem you know, Shab ghare mor, Shab deshe mor, ghar ache, I, I forgot it. To the girl's way and the whale's way, who had the winds like a weighted knife. That means the sea girl. In that case, the sea girl would show him the direction. Sea girl would show him the direction. And the whale. Whale is a very dangerous thing. something very gigantic, but the sailor developed a friendship with the whale and the whale showed him the direction. The seagull showed him the direction. He was being led by both the whale and the se seagull, whereas the wind is like a weighted knife. Perhaps the sailor sailed towards the North Pole or the South Pole, where the wind in penetrated his body like a knife, like a sharp knife. It indicated that the sailor went towards the northern horizon or the southern horizon of the earth. And all I ask is a merry yearn from a laughing fellow rover. Now we see the sailor's demand was very simple. He wants to listen a merry tale, a jovial tale from 
a companion who is also a fellow sailor. They would chat with each other, enjoy the moments, enjoy their experiences, share their experiences. And there also he wanted the association, not association of not his uh, relatives or friends or peers. He wanted the association of his fellow seller. He would share his experiences and chat over many uh, merry tales. And quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick is over. And after the end of the voice, the poet, the sailor expects a good and peaceful sleep. It was a tiresome journey, laborious journey. After the end of the laborious journey, he expected a sweet sleep, a merry dream. When the long trick is over, trick here trick means journey. When the journey is over, he would come back home. He would tell those adventurous tales to his uh, family members, to his fellow uh, sailors. And after everything was over, after the dinner was over, he would lay on the bed and dream a sweet and dream a sweet dream. He wanted a sound sleep with a sweet dream that would refresh him and encourage him to undertake another sea voice. So we see that is the mission of our fellow sailor. He had the only mission to discover new lands irrespective of dangers he had to face. Thank you. I hope you all of you students of class 10 enjoyed enjoyed this piece i tried my best to come closer to you not through direct interaction but through online next in our next class I will try to um, explain to you the grammatical part of, uh, of this um, exercise uh, today. This is, uh, this is all I have taught you. Thank you.